Hey guys, what's up? This is APT Songs. I'm Neil. What's happening? How you guys doing? So we're back to talk about some more stuff that we care about. And uh, a lot of stuff going on in the news today. A lot of stuff in the music world happening. A lot of stuff in politics happening. So much great stuff to cover. Um, I kind of wanted to start off with, I don't know if you saw this past week, that, you know, obviously the whole beat with, with Drake was happening. And so that's gone past. He's released a song with Sexy Red, which is... Anyway, so, but suffice to say, in the in the past week, there's been a lot of people that have been dropping dime on Drake in terms of his ghostwriters. Like, he's been plagued with this for years, but now there are actual audios coming out of reference tracks, whereby it appears as though, based on the reference tracks, these people may have written these very popular songs on Drake's various albums. Okay. How do you feel about ghostwriting in hip-hop? I mean, people write songs in R&B. Beyonce has writers all the time. Mm -hmm. Um like an artist like Drake, I get it because he makes music for us, the ladies, right? Mm. I love Drake um, in that vein. Mm. So, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but I mean, I maybe to a true hip hop head, like if you're doing, like talking about like your life's experience, mm. prime example, Rick Ross. I'm really not a fan of him because I feel like he stole Freeway Rick's identity. And really, oh yeah, and he, he feels some kind of way about that for sure. Yeah, you know. So like in those situations, I think that um, that's whack, mm -hmm. and I feel like he was a correctional uh, officer. <laughs> I mean, you wasn't even in the game, not unless you were sliding <sighs> phones and all yeah. types of shit in the in the penitentiary, but. You took a whole man's identity. Now that right there yep. is where and I didn't pay him for it. Yeah. Like just went out and said like it was okay. Yeah, like took his whole life story. I, I I do I get your point in terms of like like a lot of Drake songs aren't personal narratives. It's just kind of like this like I'm the best. I'm gonna get back and blah 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 blah. But it's not a thing where like if he was like saying oh yeah a person with their situation and it's like you actually experienced none of that. But even with that it's like if you tell somebody a story they might be able to word the story in a song better than you possibly could. My other thought was that I don't think people are aware of like just how much work it takes to write songs. Like I've, I've been an artist, I've written songs and to write a whole album of songs can take anywhere from like on a good week, maybe a week, but usually like two or three months time. Drake does albums, he does mixtapes, he does features with a bunch of other artists, mm -hmm. he has a label to run, he's constantly touring. I would not fault this man at all if he was like, hey, I wanna hire the best I can to make songs that I wanna put out because I wanna put out stuff on a consistent basis. I'm not gonna write all this stuff. But Drake doesn't like rap about you know, gangster lifestyle, so mm -hmm. to say. That's not his, does he? Um, I mean, he has a few songs here and there like, that allude to, like, like he has a song called Mob Ties, which is like, you know, blah, 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 blah. and then he has other songs where he's like, uh, yeah, if he, if my man can't handle it, I'll come handle it. Like, so he talks tough on songs sporadic, because I think he knows, you know, as much as the girl songs will get him through, dudes that are listening to the album want some of that, like, tough stuff. So there'll be a few things here and there, but not at the level that most dudes are. It's like, I'm in the, sh every, every song is like, I'm in the, I'm in the street shooting people, like, every single song. Like, that's not his, yes. his mantra. I, I'm not for familiar with those songs like I love uh, God's Plan, Controller, mm -hmm. uh, Find Your Love. I mean these are older Drake songs but he's just like the R&B rapper to me so yeah. I don't look at him and put him in that category. So yeah if somebody writes him a love rap and he raps it mm -hmm. I mean more power to him. Yeah <laughs> and I think I think because I was a theater major in college so like I understand the power of like getting a group together and you bounce ideas off each other because if Drake's just writing all the stuff himself, right? Like let's say back then when he first came out, right? All the songs, he had the same flow on every <laughs> single song. Now, if you want to be a purist, you could say, but that's Drake writing his stuff. And so I like that better. Right. I personally like when I hear Drake delivering lines that are in different styles, in different accents, in, in different ways. And so if it meant that he couldn't write those and somebody else did, whether it was Yachty or some of the other people that have come out and said they did stuff for him, then like, for me, that's fine. And also, Drake has also written songs for other people. Right, right, right. Like, people forget that he actually does know how to write, but like, I remember when Snoop first came out, Snoop also wrote all his stuff, and then around like 2009 or 10, he had some albums come out, and he was like, yeah, I'm trying to put the homies on, so I want them to get fed, I'm gonna let them write for me now, because I got right. other stuff, I'm hanging with Martha Stewart, doing all this other stuff, right. so I don't have time to. But also, too, he's not of that lifestyle anymore either. So, mm. I mean, I applaud Snoop for, okay, I'm not on the block anymore mm -hmm. like that so to say so right. like the stuff that he's gonna rap about would be like Martha Stewart in a cooking show because that's his reality yeah. so I mean at what point 
do we allow rappers to evolve and grow? Mm. And then the question then becomes, is that what the people want? Like sometimes people want to keep you in a box. Right, right, right. And they want to they want to they want to keep you in doggy style because that's how we love <laughs> you. But people evolve. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. Snoop is about to do the Olympics. Nobody wants to hear him talking about gin and juice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Although he's got a company called Gin and Juice now. Right. And he and, sells and it. Dr. Dre. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I think that, and then the question becomes, if Snoop put out a, a, a song about the Olympics, mm -hmm. would people be interested in it? Right. Because it's like, because people are always saying, you know, rappers need to keep it real. A lot of these rappers, I remember one time Fat Joe came out and said like, yeah, like 90% of my stuff never happened. Like I just make some stuff up because it sounds cool and people want to listen to it. And I look like a guy that could have done that stuff because they're all playing a part. Like all, right. the, all these rappers you think are like living the true lifestyle, even like 21 Savage, he was talking about all this murder, murder stuff. He's from the UK. He can't do no crimes or else he gets kicked out of the country. And we found that out a few years ago yeah. when he was like, when he almost got kicked out, he was like, oh no, actually everything I said is fake. That's not a thing. Like, they're all playing a part. Yeah, you know? I, I've kind of, um, like, I couldn't name you a 21 Savage song. I'm sorry. He's got, he got a whole album with Drake. <laughs> so, really? yeah, 21, can you do something for me? That, he, 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 no? That, yeah, so. <laughs> but, I mean, but I think because Music today is not the same. I tend to like put on '90s music mm -hmm. and listen to that all the time versus the new stuff that's out because it's not, it's not given. Mm. It's just now, not now the question is, for artists that came out back in the day, if they're still putting out new stuff, do you listen to that stuff? It depends, but most of the time, probably not. Interesting, because no. there's a lot of rappers now that like uh, like your Snoop's, your Dog Pounds, Eminem's got a new single coming out this Friday. Rakim's got an album coming out. Like, oh, Kim? Huh? No, Rakim. Rakim. Oh, right. Rakim's got a whole album coming out with like with some new schoolers and also some old schoolers. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of older cats, or that I would say dudes that were really popular back like 15, 20 years ago, <laughs> that are still putting out stuff. And so a lot of it doesn't hit, but you also have somebody like Kanye who just put out a number one hit back in March of this year, you know, with Carnival. Like, so is it a thing where older artists should still be putting out stuff? And like, is that important in terms of like how it affects their legacy? I think it depends on an artist if they can, if they can um, reach their age bracket. I'm talking about older artists. If they can mm. reach their age bracket as well as tap into the new generation. Mm -hmm. But there's some type of balance. Mm. Um, because like the um the album that Jay Z and Beyonce did. Um, oh, the uh Everything's Love or something like that. Everything's yeah, yeah. Love. Like I love that project because Jay Z was acting his age mm. and the stuff that he was rapping about was grown folk stuff, but they did it in a way that it was still relevant to today's times. Right. So if I art like Nas, I love Nas's album that he did. Um um, the oh. one that has the Lauryn Hill song on it. Oh, the, uh, was it the, the, it's the, a red cover. The, the King's Disease series? Of, yeah. Of, he, like, like, he did like three King's Disease albums. I mean, and so to me, Nas is one of those artists that can still be contemporary mm -hmm. and, and up to date, but you still get that grit. But I don't even know if that album did well, but like mm -hmm. that's, ten, that's pretty much what I tend now. West Coast, love what Kendrick Lamar does. Yeah. Love that. Um, but I couldn't really name another mm. West Coast rapper that I would be like, oh, I want that album. Yeah, it seems like it, it appears as though West Coast artists have a harder time, I'll say, being mainstream relevant. Because, I mean, if they get Cali love, they can stay at home and, you know, e forty still torn, Too Short still torn, in right. Cali, making all the money. Right. I don't know if those artists are as popular as they get older to, like, the mass at large. But, like, E-40 could just do... uh E-40 could just do his old stuff, and I would be happy. Like, yeah. I don't need a new song. <laughs> Too short. I don't need a new song. Yeah. You know, just blow the whistle, and I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I do want to do if, like, as you get older, like, for most because people, I they have, like, family and kids and stuff where it's like they can't, It well, they may not want to play this stuff around their kids, or they just have other life stuff going on to where they don't relate to that stuff. So, right. like I said, th these old artists could be putting out new stuff, and it's like, that's great and all, but I don't relate to that because a lot of those artists could still be sounding regress. Like, I'm still in the block at 50 and still doing things. Right. And it's like, are you, though, or are you writers? Right. Like, I wouldn't, <laughs> want, I wouldn't want Too Short to stay in the, to come out with an album talking about bitches like he did like back in the day like blow the whistle was was a classic mm -hmm. 
it has aged well. Yes. But I don't want another album um, like Freaky Tales <laughs> and stuff like that. You Wait, know what I'm saying? So what would you want Too Short to be talking about? Because he's like, he's in his 50s, like I, I said, think. he doesn't have to talk about nothing. He could just do the old stuff. Just do the old stuff. <laughs> I'm good. Well, that's what I'm talking about. It's where it's like at the point that your audience also out outgrows what you once were, then does it even behoove an uh, older artist to try to get new fans? And then how do they do that? Because they don't want to be sounding like they're young or that they're trying to front, like they're doing the stuff young people do. But then how do you relate to them? I think Jay-Z's done a great balance of that, but it's like it's very hard for most artists to do that. Um, maybe they should. Maybe they should just stay in the lane that they're in and just be the classic man. Be the classic. classic man. Be the classic man. There, there are a lot of uh, like you know, like now there's it's old school. Now it's like '90s and '80s. So it's like there's a lot of those old school '90s and '80s acts that do tours consistently, and and right. they actually make a lot of money. Like mm-hmm. you know, Salt and Pepper on tour, like New Kids on the Block, right. and all these other old school rappers and stuff, and actually like selling out like stadiums and stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like just um, do the tours. Like look at SWV and um, SWV and Escape. They're on tour now. Mm. They're doing all the old stuff, and it's sufficient. Are people really going to see them? Yeah. What? I mean, those are classics. You don't even get R&B like that today. I just want to, because I know, like, a new edition's on tour, for example, but, like, Bobby Brown, just, it just sounds so much older. It's like, do you get the same feel? Of course. Like, you go to a new, I, I'm a candy girl. Okay. So you go to a new edition concert, and it's okay that Bobby may have to go to the side to get a little oxygen. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You know, I still am gonna Roni. I'm still gonna rock with you. Mm. I'm still gonna um, every little step. My prerogative. It's the nostalgic part of it that we love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to like Lil Kim. Lil' Kim is still my favorite female rapper. Like, mm. I can name all the girls that are out now, much respect to them. But Lil' Kim did it all for me. You know what I'm She's saying? She's like, like, yeah. like the main one to, to put out the rock for back in the day. And everybody should pretty much just copy her. And to some extent, Foxy, but Foxy was after Kim also. So Yeah, I mean, Foxy was cool. Eve was bomb. Yeah. Um, and, and Foxy was bomb, too. Um, and like the new girls that are out now, it's mm. just kind of like, um, It's not your bag? Huh? It's not your bag? Nah, I mean, I, I have a few songs. Like, I love Cardi B's first album when mm-hmm. she only came out with one. Huh. We still waiting. She's but like, I think that's smart. Yeah. If she not feeling it, like, don't, like, if if it ain't a cl- classic, let it go. Like, Rihanna. I'm just like, all the singles that have come out, though, for the most part, like I say, she, if she released, like, 10 singles so far, like, seven of them have been, like, fire. And she just is like, oh, this is my, watch my album. Nothing. I'm like, Cardi, just drop it. Like, you had, like, 100 songs. Just but drop the album. But she really have to? Like, well, she like said, who she's, set the standard to say that she... Has to do that. She, um, she said, "Real talk, like she at the point that she had kids, she actually likes being at home and being a mom more so. But also, she's every guest appearance she does, she gets tons of money, and then it, it streams well, and then she gets to do like pop up the shows here and there. She's still getting her bag, and she's got all these brand deals. Right. She ain't never got to put another album out. But as a fan who has seen her put out like seven songs that I want on an album, you can just add three new songs. Boom, album's done. You know. And I think her thing was like she said." Putting out an album means she has to tour. Like, no, you don't. You could be a YouTube artist and get all the money from YouTube and be fine. You have a big yeah, enough fan to do that. I, I, I commend her for not allowing the labels and management to push her to do something that she doesn't want to do. Mm. If she's not ready to put out an album, don't do it. Because, I, I like I said, the first one was a classic. Mm. I remember um, uh, being up in Oakland and my homegirl, Shell, was like, Cardi B, you gotta listen to Bodak Yellow. You got, and I'm like, the the, girl, what the freak? I was like, the <laughs> girl from girl. Love and Hip Hop, the one with the T, a girl. With the she tea? put that thing on, and I've been um, a, a Cardi B fan ever since. Yeah, yeah, love her, love her evolution, love her story, love just everything about that moment from Love and Hip Hop mm. and what she is now. Like that's a story within itself. So if she don't want to put out another album. She's done enough. Oh, she good, man. She good. I just, I'll say this: if that, if her mo is ultimate to not do it, I just wish she would stop teasing us. Because she comes out and says, "Hey, y'all, this is the new song from our that's coming from my album coming soon." Up, oh, not gonna do it. Hey, I got this song called Wops coming out. It's coming soon. Up, oh, not gonna do it. Hey, the song enough. Up, oh, it's coming out. Up, oh, up, oh, not gonna do it. Like, don't do that either. Like, just make a decision. And say, look, I'm only putting out single. You could be well, a singles why? artist. It's her prerogative to do because it, it, it just it gets us excited to to tear a whole body of work. I'd rather her be like like uh what's his name like Ot Genesis like. Look, I'm a singles artist from now on. You can get a song from me every six months. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. That's fine. Just right. don't tease me for like. But I think I com- I commend him for that because he knows his capacity. 
And yeah. if his capacity is a single every six months, don't don't force it on us. Right. You know don't <laughs> force it on us. So like I come in like Rihanna. Perfect example of That's another one I wish you would just She yeah. just is like, listen to the old stuff, love it. I may or may mm. not. And y'all not gonna bully me into putting out yeah. something that I'm not feeling. For your, it's enough music out there. Well, Don't so, listen to Tyler. Rihanna's, you know an, Rihanna's an example of like, though, okay, you were been around since 2005 or six up to 2000. You put out like, you were, you were, you, she was doing Jay Z numbers. Like every year was an album coming out. You have like nine or 10 albums out. You're good. I ain't gonna bail you for nothing else. I can go listen to the old stuff. Somebody's gonna take your old stuff and remix it. It is what it is. It's totally fine. So I guess my question is like, when do you think, at what point, at what point, doesn't uh, I guess at any point technically an artist doesn't owe us music anymore, but like at what point do you feel as though an artist can comfortably be like, all right, I'm good? Like one album, three albums, five albums? Does it matter if uh, any of those albums were were fire in particular or like you have to wait to get the fire album before that happens? Like, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's all relative. I think it's the individual. And if their pockets are straight, they can do whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like if 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 you eating good off of what you, you know, have put out to the universe. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do nothing else. If you want to go travel the world, then so be it. I think that is the problem with the celebrity of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. People want to be in the limelight. People want, but what we're, I think what they're finding out is, is that it's too much. Yeah. It's too much pressure, it, especially nowadays with social media. Mm. You know, before when people put out an album, you really didn't have to hear what people think. Like what we're doing right now, this was not a thing. True. You know what I'm saying? Like my opinion, your opinion, it wasn't even available. It was combined in like a room of friends. Like we're going to talk about this yeah, and go home. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. But now so many people feel as if they have a right to say something, which could really us go into the whole Northwest conversation mm -hmm. about... There's so many layers to that conversation, but I think that's a, um, a, a good example of the general public having so much power and so much say. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's a good and I think it's a bad thing. Well, it's interesting because you, you, um, I know when Beyonce was touring and her daughter Blue Ivy, like she wanted to perform, Beyonce was like, no, no, no. And she's like, no, I want to do it for Lisa's show. So they let her perform for like a show. And social media tore her to bits. Like, she wasn't even trying. Right. She wasn't great, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so Beyonce was like, okay, so you've got to get better. And then she got better. So by the time I saw her at the show, she had a whole routine. It was like, oh, snap. She actually, like, knows what she's doing. But it's like, so that, that's a case where, like, social media helped. But that's not the, always the case. Like, so with Northwest's situation, like, she was uh, cast to be Simba for the Hollywood Bowl uh, edition of the 30th anniversary of the I Lion King. everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so suffice to say, though, but so if I say, like, uh, according to one TikToker that worked on it, like, Kim basically, there were, like, four other girls that allegedly. were- Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. There were four other girls, allegedly, that were in the running to get this part, and then, allegedly, Kim Kardashian came in and said, hey, uh, I want my daughter to audition, and then after she auditioned, and based on what I saw from the footage, she did not sound great, but- at that point, Kim was kind of throwing around the money a little bit. And next thing you know, boom, Northwest is on stage, having never done that before. And she sounded horrible and didn't play the part well. So, and now she's getting, now the social media is saying across the board that her performance was not that great. I, I can only imagine how she's taking that. But like, how do you feel about that situation? I mean, I think there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, you went from Blue Ivy, then you went to North. And I think to separate those two things, okay, that was Beyonce's tour. Yes. Like- Nobody. That wasn't a Disney production. That wasn't even though Beyonce and and it's so much to unpack because probably a week prior to it being announced that um, Northwest was going to be at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, Disney announced that Blue Ivy and Beyonce. Mm would be uh, playing characters in The Lion King that's coming out in December. Yes, because they have that movie coming out. So, they, so, that, so, yeah. so, so there you have it. Then a week later, it's like, well, Northwest is going to play Simba at the Hollywood Bowl. Okay. okay, so it's like, but going back to Blue Ivy's performance, that was her mother's tour. Mm -hmm. Her mother could do whatever she wants on her tour. This isn't a production, and I'm sure that Blue Ivy is, is training, you know, for that. So that So that's that. Then you think about this. Mm. The Kardashians are on Hulu. Yes. Who owns Hulu? 
Disney. Bam. Oh, snap. I didn't even think about that. Okay, so, you know, everybody's saying Kim. I think that uh, Mama Chris had a little something to do with that, too. You know what I'm saying? Because that is a whole business entity. Mm. Um, And I think what happened is it took away from the preparation that those people put into being Broadway characters. Mm -hmm. Um, Jennifer Hudson, she was in it. She's been on Broadway. You know, these people train for that. And to not have that little girl prepare mm-hmm. in a way that, like, does she even want to sing? Right. Like, okay. Even beyond that, does, does she, she, she want to sing? sing? Does she want to prepare? Does she want to actually go? Because, I, again, theater major here. I did musical theater. That takes weeks on end. So for somebody right. last minute to be like, hey, last minute, guys, we have this person coming in, and uh, they haven't re- re- rehearsed anything. So when this show is happening, you Zebra. Make sure she gets her mark. And then blah, blah, blah. It's like, right. you don't add extra work on a me for... Uh, seemingly a nobody except for she's a, somebody's famous kids, but like a nobody that's never done this before. I got to walk them through this stuff. Like that's like being at a job. It's like, Hey, we're going to hire this person to be above you, but teach them how to do the job. Yeah. And then it's just like so many people. I mean the, the whole Nepo baby hashtag. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's, 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 I feel bad for North, but I also feel like her mother, her, her family put her in that horrible position because mm. you know better. You know, like, why would you put that child in that situation? Are you competing with the Carters? Are you, you know, I mean, it's just crazy to me that they would do that to that poor baby. And then for you to tell her, oh, they're just jealous because, you know, we have the power and everybody. But you shouldn't use your power to to, to negate four little kids that have mm. really trained and they want to be on Broadway. North don't want to be on Broadway. Right. This is know? just like a check off. It's like, hey, look, I was at Hollywood Bowl. Like, yeah. But you didn't earn it. Like, look, if you want thing if like, because she's already been on one of Connie's albums. If you want thing if you develop legitimately as an artist to where you earn the right to be at Hollywood Bowl or or Connie performs at one time and it's like, hey, Northwest, come on stage. That's different. That's yeah. the daddy, like, like Blue like, Ivy. Yeah. You know, and then it's like even the costume. You could tell that was some old Kim Kanye type look that they put together. You think together. so? With the la- you think so? Yeah, I don't think I personally don't think that that was the costume that the Lion King and Disney picked for that. Ooh. I think that was more of a Kanye Kim type. Okay, we're, I'm gonna, and then they think that you know, don't be surprised if it's not on the market on one of their brands. On, mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure, to like, oh, on on Hulu Live now, Lion King featuring Northwest, like that could totally happen, right? So it. It, it's just, um, which goes back to the whole conversation of just it's just too much opinion, it's too much nepotism. Mm-hmm. Like I'm exhausted. <laughs> how do you how do you feel about the the concept of nepo, of the nepo baby in general in terms of as it relates to like fame? Because clearly, like in day to day jobs, people are always like, "Hey, you come into my company because you're my son, you're my daughter, right. and then if you want to take it over later, you can't, whatever." Um, but sometimes there's a, a, a certain feeling about you know just because your parent was an actor, now you get to be on stage and this other stuff. I, I mean, I think the concept of nepotism is, 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 is far beyond just entertainment. Mm. Like I've been in spaces where I've seen companies that had the potential to be more, they won't reach that potential because they're too concerned about having their family members in place. And nepotism, sometimes it works. I mean, because I get building generational wealth. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think that it's important, but I also think it's important when you have a organization that is for the public mm-hmm. and you're doing that, you should hire qualified people. You know what I'm saying? Ideally, yes. You should hire qualified people. I mean, even if you want to groom your family members to 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 be what you want them to be, you also have to be realistic about what they're capable of, mm. you know, and, and, and where they really want to be. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, and then right, right. sometimes people who are in nepotism uh, situations, they're not invested because they know they're going to get their check either way. Right. And, 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 and they're comfortable with status quo. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but that's just the way the world works. You yeah. know, you have to get used to it. But with the Kardashians, it's just like that was just um, 
an example of gross nepotism. Yeah. Like, it seems like everybody born to that family is like, hey, you have to contribute. So get out there and start. Like, the other kids haven't started doing anything yet, but, like, Northwest is, is the oldest one. It's right. like, hey, you're old enough. Get out there and record. Now, again, we don't know this. This is all alleged because, hey, for all we know, she wanted to jump on Kanye's album. For all we know, she could have been at her mom's, like, knees, like, oh, please, I hear The Lion King's coming up at the Hollywood Bowl. Please see if I can get a part in it. That could have happened. No, I always, no, no. This, is the, this is the messiness of it in me. But I always feel like it's always a reaction to what Blue Ivy does. You think so? Yeah. You think that? So you think Blue Ivy was on tour last year getting all the praise? It's like, hey, our daughter also performs. Let's put her on an album. Hey, let's right, put her on stage. Right, right. And then huh. she was on stage, you know, doing that. Um, like I said, they announced that uh, Beyonce and Blue Ivy's on The Lion King coming out in December. And, and, and in about less than 10 days, here comes the Kardashians. Yeah. Uh, she's doing Lion King at the Hollywood Bowl. And everybody's like, okay. And nobody would have been mad <laughs> yeah. if she would have nailed it. Oh, yeah. Like if she, she would have just... nailed it and, and, and it looked like they took those 10 days to put in the work, mm-hmm. to get the trainer, to get the... Like when you look at Renaissance... Some of that shows the effort that yeah. Blue Ivy because she really went put was, into that. I was saying to her, "It's like you go, like she is really like doing. I couldn't do yeah. it, man." And yeah. she, she did that about the end. The whole stadium was like, "Oh my god!" Right, right, right. But that's because again, she learned and she like her mom is like, "We go, you gonna do it? You gonna do it right?" Right, right. So I, I, I don't think Kim. I don't think Kim cared at all. She's like, "Just, just be up there, baby." Like, yeah, just put on, put it on. You're, you're me and Kanye's daughter. Uh, we got this, you know. And, and and I feel like too Disney and the producers of that production. I don't think they'll ever do that again because mm-hmm. it was a mess and it just showed gross like favoritism and nepotism to somebody who didn't deserve it. And then you have all of these other kids who did. Especially on the 30th anniversary where it's like, you have all these other cast members from the past. Like you have Jason Weaver there who voiced the original Simba. Right. You had, uh, said Jennifer Hudson there. Like all these other people from the past that have legitimately been part of this production. And then you have people that are auditioning. They're like, hey, we've loved The Lion King forever and a day and we want to contribute to it. We've been doing Broadway shows for a while. We think we can really contribute well to this. And they'd just be like, let's just hire a random novice. Yeah, this doesn't matter. This anniversary doesn't matter. Like that's the feeling telling you get now like was this really a big deal or right. was it not because you're just like whoever whoever is famous enough to be Simba uh, you and then I'm also like this is just maybe the bias to me like why didn't they cast a boy for that part like Simba is a boy they have Nala Nala's a girl well, like, I mean <laughs> in the world that we live in today I know I, I know mean, I, that's still, that, <laughs> I mean the queer community is like Everybody can do everything. I'm just saying. And that's the they world go, we live they in. Go, they so go, girl, boy, at this point, in today's times, it don't matter. I'm just saying, they ain't going to cast Mufasa as a, as a woman. I cannot see them ever doing that as a decision. But Simba, no give problem it, at all. Give like, it time. You think so? Give it time. Is there going to be a drag Mufasa? <laughs> so that's okay. Time. <laughs> give it time. And, 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 yeah, just give it time. It's coming. Wow. <laughs> I, Disney, hey, who knows? Because Disney's got a lot of woke movies out there these days. So who knows? But, right, man. right, right, right. Oh, that's sad. So what's the next? What's the next? I mean, that's uh, we're we're also kind of waiting for the Trump thing. Like, I don't know when this is going to air, but like Trump is the the trial's deliberating about whether or not he did the thing or not. And so, I don't know. How do you feel about that trial? Like being the first one that he could potentially. Well, there's going to be a verdict on regardless because right. in the grand scheme of things, like he'll get found guilty for money fraud. Does that involve jail time at all, or it is it could. just like it oh, could. Okay. he could face um, a fine? He can face probation or he can face prison time. Oh, he can. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Okay. Again, I don't know when this is going to air. So like, what do you think the odds are of him actually getting either a fine or jail time or nothing? Like, I don't know because we live in a country of white privilege, white supremacy, uh, systemic racism, and all of those things that I just mentioned Mm -hmm. are to favor white folks. Mm -hmm. Um, especially white men. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it's like he could very well walk away from this because there's such a privilege of holding the office of presidency in this country. Um, We've even seen Joe Biden cover a lot of things that Donald Trump should be held accountable for because he's a former president. Mm -hmm. So I'm it, it's just it, it's the system that we live in, yeah. and, and and until we can eradicate some of those things, he very well could walk away. But I'm I'm more interested. But 
Um, hats off to um, Alvin Braggs, the district attorney's office, mm. for being bold enough to bring those charges. Um, I think him and his office did a fantastic job of 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 of, of following the evidence, mm-hmm. presenting it, witnesses. You know, I think they did a great job, as well as uh, Attorney General Letitia James, because she's yeah. still going after him. But the one I'm really looking forward to watching, and I think we'll be able to watch that one on TV. This one. Mm. We were able to, we got to just get the reports, and get the reports, yeah, from, get yeah, the, yeah. the real time reports. But the one in Atlanta with DA uh, Fannie, Fannie Willis, yeah, yeah. I think we'll be able to watch that, mm-hmm. and I think all eyes will be on Georgia. When does that one start? Well, there's no court date yet, right? Because they're because they're pushing it along yeah. to have to, yeah. so he can win and, the election. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but that one right there, because to me. She is his match. Mm. I think Letitia James was too, but Fanny is his match. Do you do you think the the controversy that happened with Fanny is going to affect like how that trial oh, he runs? Oh, definitely will make it an issue. But she has no problem mm. with defending herself, being accountable for herself. Um, and so I feel like he's afraid of her mm. because she ain't afraid of him. And she could give it just like he could give it. You know, he's known for his little nasty remarks. Well, she got him too. Yeah, he got, she she got a lot of jabs. she quit with it with hers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the trial to watch. Also, because that one too, like this one was centered around, you know, democracy and him trying to pay people money yes. to win office. I think that's what people should be paying attention to. But I also think, the one in Georgia is more sinister and scary as to how all those white people conspire to ignore mm. what we wanted as voters. Right. They try to overthrow our democracy. He tried to steal votes. He terrorized him and, and the his, workers. his Trump clan. Mm, yeah. They terrorized you know, election workers, poll workers, and those people will never be the same. Like Fonnie Willis says, she can never go back to her house because of the threats. Yep. These women will never be able to have their life because of the threats, because white folks are afraid <laughs> of losing the majority. They're, they're, I, I don't even think white folks are the majority of the United States. The mm. only thing they hold is the power to keep that narrative. Right. But if we were to really have an honest look, remember when we did the census, mm-hmm. Donald Trump tried to mess the census up. He yep. took the direct. He did all of that because they do not want it to be known huh. that they are no longer the majority. I mean, that that kind of better explains. Because like, I always have this question of like, there's there's just I, never have I seen a person literally have so much evidence that is out there by way of video and audio, and people are still like. But maybe it didn't happen. Like, there's a whole recorded phone call of him saying, we need these, these number of votes. You got to find these votes. And people are still like, we should have a trial just to see if this if he's guilty or not. There's It's right there. Like, unless that's not, unless there's like a great Trump impersonator that called this office, that's right there. And yet, all this stuff will be in front. There's proof that he paid a check to a, to a adult film actress. There's, right. there's proof that he made these phone calls. It's always the proof of these things that he embezzled with money, that he cheated people out. And people will still be like, like, that's the sad part for me is that people will still follow him. Whether he gets found guilty of any of this stuff that, he's, that we're talking about or not, people will still be like, but I still rock with him. And I still want, I still want him to be my president. This because guy. he holds up the symbol of what white power and white supremacy means. And the white folks don't want to let that go. That's just you so know, and, and a lot of people I know um, from the black community, you know, there are conversations about having dual citizenship mm-hmm. because... America's not what it once was, and it's so hard to fight the mm. systemic part of how this country was designed. Yeah. It was all built upon racism from the police departments, from the different branches of government, from infrastructure mm-hmm. to transportation to health and family services, from HUD. All of that stuff is not designed for minorities to win. And it's just exhausting to try to combat all of these things. Yeah. And you have structures that are forcibly working against you to make change. And so it's like when we look at this whole election, it's like, okay, you know, okay, Joe Biden is the better, but he still represents 
oppression. Yep, because like Lord knows, there's, there's video footage back in the day making certain decisions in, in these congressional things that were not favorable to black people. Well, so. no, no, no. Particularly why so many of men of color, black men in particular, are in prison. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so it's like, I feel like Joe Biden is, is trying to, re, you know, this is his redemption. Right. Tour, I mean, he started with, with Kamala, so he's got somebody. This is his redemption yeah, yeah. tour, you know, and I'll give him that, but he still doesn't go far enough to eradicate the changes that we need in this country. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I'll give Donald Trump for when he was in office. That nigga shook shit up, whether <laughs> whether whether he could or whether he couldn't, he did it. Yeah. Whether it was symbolic in a executive order, whether you know it was like remember when he first got into office and he stopped everybody from coming in the country and yeah. everybody went bananas. I mean, none of that stuff was right, but he did it. Right. And so you have. People like a Joe Biden that's trying to hold up the bloodstained banner of America, but it's not benefiting people. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then so it's like, you know, like I just signed up today. They just sent out something and we were looking at um, the TV and uh, he's doing this big push. They're doing this big push to mobilize black voters. Mm-hmm. They have a call tomorrow. I signed up for it because I want to be aware but it's just like, why we always got to say, uh, why we got always got to say right. democracy and white folks? I always feel like just in general, like black people are like the, where the trend set is, where the ones that determine fashion and where the money's going. Then it's also like in terms of where the country's going. It's like, oh, let's all every four years now go and court these black voters because we know that if whoever, how they vote, it's going to matter. How it's black like, women yeah. vote, it's going to, that's what we're going to, and it's like, yeah, and, and it's like, it, it, it's like uh, Charlie Brown in the football where it's like, hey, we swear this time if you vote for us, we're going to really do right by you okay right. well for you oh sorry like every time and we fall for it every time right, right, like, right. even people like you know i obviously most black people as a consensus are probably gearing towards joe biden it could be argued that some of his policies have also not been that great so it's like when you look at it's like you're you're choosing i mean the lesser two evils just it's like almost like the lesser two slave masters like which one of these people are going to not beat us the most Right. That's not the best or, way to make a choice, but like we don't have any, any other way to set up in this country to do it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, it, it's um like if you're gonna, you know, like the whole student loan thing, like the rollout, just fucking forgive all the student loan debt. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you playing with us? Because I won't mind forgiving. Yeah. But a lot of my friends have been forgiven, but it's like the picking and choosing of how you, you know, it's an issue, mm-hmm. and probably the people that need their student loans forgiven are the ones who need it the most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it's, it's it's like, you know, what's happening over in Gaza and what happened just recently and what is it, Rafa? And, mm-hmm. you know, Netanyahu, why are we in such an important... What is the alliance with Israel? That's a white man's thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you have tons of people that are crying out to you to stop it and you're like, we riding with Israel. We're going to go dump the uh, Palestinians some food and we're going to build this little dock. And, you know, mm. we're going to, but we're not going to stop Netanyahu from acting a fool. You're basically like, you're you're helping the opposition and also hurting at the same time. That's, right. such, a, that's such a weird, because like you're making money on both ends of doing that, essentially. Like, so it's just, I feel like, um, this co- but this country ha- has to have a reckoning, like mm. over 400 years of them doing shitty shit. Yep. And and the thing about it is the only thing that they have is the power to control the government. And mm. and the minute that us as people of color really understand how to dismantle that power is when we probably will see a more perfect union that we want to see or mm. we want to say democracy. But like democracy right now, it's like a maybe. Yeah. It's plus a it's, maybe. Plus it's hard to, to unionize people these days because the real talk, I think like there's so many distractions like between our phones and then computer where it's like, right. I'll just do my own thing versus like actually get up and mobilize and go to things that help people. Like people still do it, but it's just, right. it, doesn't seem like, it doesn't feel like it's like, like it just feels like the, the civil rights movement time was like when people really like galvanized to like go do stuff. And now it's just kind of like, eh, things are mostly fine. So um, it's, you yeah, know, it's, my day to day, it's not bugging me, so it's whatever. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Or we just pick up this. Yep. And we just say it here or we say Social it. Social justice here. warrior. I, I feel a certain way. We should do whatever. Then that's all we do. Just but I, I really <laughs> think that, um, 
we're living in some crazy times. And I'm considering, you know, getting dual citizenship. Where where to? Was the other place? I love the Caribbean. Okay. Um, and I have a friend who I went to college with. Uh, and she actually moved to South Africa Ooh. and she moved maybe like five, maybe almost 10 years ago. And I, mean, I don't know if it's that long, but around that time mm. and she's happy, you mm. know what I'm saying? And it's like, Is she, how's, it, how's it different over there than over here? According to her. I, I think it's just the, the, the whole, the whole vibe of blackness. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Even though we're probably looked upon differently. Um, when, when you look at how, Africans perceive themselves like there's a um a conversation going on now I think it's on TikTok about Africans don't want to be called African braiders you know like you know like where are you going to get your hair braided and I'm going to the African shop you know identity means a lot mm-hmm. and when you lump Africans in a certain group you have uh Ghana you have Kenya you have yeah. Johannesburg you have some that you have Ethiopians. So to lump them all, but that's the thing. They have identity. Us as black folks over here, we have no identity. We have yeah. no native language. It's just we're all black. There's no like separation of like, okay, you're like right. uh, Belizean and you're whatever. Like it's just all the same. You right, know? right, right, right. You know, and so we we identify as black, but they don't identify like that. You know, they identify as to where they come from. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so there's 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 such a different mindset and a culture shift mm-hmm. that that we as black americans have been denied yeah and so to be able to have that like experience like in the caribbean you know they have culture they have um you know their foods and stuff like ours is soul food like we took the scraps and right, made right. we it made it a thing yeah yeah but they have like you know like actual from here yeah native tongue yeah, yeah, native. yeah and so that i think that would be really cool for us as black folks to experience mm. um so yeah i think it, for me it would be either like um someplace in africa uh like a johannesburg um I don't know about Kenya or Ghana. I don't know. Yeah. But, or, you know, the Caribbean. I love um, Caribbean food. Mm. I love the water. I love, but <laughs> those are places that if I was going to have dual citizenship, that yeah. I would, uh, Plus it's just to. the feeling of just also, it, it's, it's a weird thing for if you have not experienced it before, but like the experience of not being a minority. In a, in a in a culture like I, I went to, but they would look at us as a minority. Well, I know, but I'm saying like it, it's still it, there's still even with that like yes we're we're different we're foreigners but there's still something to say like people of your skin tone right. There's nothing else like like I've heard stories that people go to Africa and they'll you know they'll go to like say Ghana or whatever and, and people will be like you know oh this person looks just like a, you look just like a relative of mine that I have like oh you just even that connection right. of culture you know right uh, I went to to a black to HBCU. Uh, college for five years and just the, the idea of walking around campus where it's like 90% of people here look like me, I can, that gave me a better understanding actually of like why white people fight so hard to keep the status quo because that shit feels good. Like it feels good to not to have questions about things. You're going to have a general commonality with most people around you, even if you're from different parts. Like right. that feels fantastic. I right. totally get it. So I understand why there's a pushback of that, but like everybody should be able to experience that. Right, right, right. Yeah. I went to um, HBCU too. I went to Gramlin mm-hmm. and that was the first, I think that's why um, I got my blackness from, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, 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 and lately I've been thinking like for the past 20 years, I've worked in nothing but black spaces Me too. by choice. Um, but now I'm feeling like, am I in a bubble mm-hmm. because I'm not, um, expanding. Mm-hmm. And then I'm looking at other people mm-hmm. who are in white spaces and it's like, maybe, you know, all of this culture, mm-hmm that I have, you know, it's in a bubble because like, I, I, I've i never had the desire to like work at like in CNN white spaces. Or- yeah. I've never had the desire, but now I'm questioning those things. Like maybe <laughs> there's something that I can add to <laughs> that conversation to expand it. My question would be, do you think white people have the same thoughts? Like, do you ever think white people are like, am I just in a bubble? Do I need to be more culturally aware? Do I need to work with some black no, people? No, because they're mainstream. That's the point. So, like, I, I don't feel any kind of way. Like, I've I've primarily, I mean, 
most of the places I've worked, you've also worked at, or you've gotten me those jobs, but it's like, I mostly have worked in black spaces and been fine. Like, I don't question it. Cause I, I lived in predominantly white areas in white neighborhoods, went to like predominantly white school, pre- college prep school. When I was going through my last two years of high school, like mm-hmm. I had more than enough of that to know that I felt very uncomfortable getting questioned about certain things or do black people think about this way? Or you must still blah, blah, or you're not like, the, like, I didn't like that. If I never go back to that, I'm totally fine. So I, I never have those kind of questions in my head. <laughs> I mean, I just, um, I'm just, you know, questioning that now. Like, do Mm. I want to be, but I want to be in white spaces to contribute to the conversation Mm -hmm. to, to maybe, you know, broaden an awareness that's unknown. Now, will I be able to do that? Cause I'm not, I'm not a shut up and dribble type person. That's just not me in black spaces. Got me in trouble too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, I feel like I may want to offer those different conversations and bring my blackness into, you know, these mainstream spaces mm-hmm. that, you know, because there are a lot of black people in these spaces, but they're mainstream. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I just I just I, I'm just questioning those 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 things right now. Like, mm-hmm. do I wanna go outside my bubble? Right. Well, a lot of those, I think it'd be beneficial in that a lot of those spaces also, they may not even be aware that there's actually a black audience that they have that they could be catering a bit more to. Right, you know? right. Because they're just yeah. saying like, oh, it's just old business. That's like, 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 we have a black person, so that means we're meeting the quota. No, but the conversation, <laughs> the conversation is not there. Even how you set up the black people to talk about, like prime example, mm-hmm. I love Abby Phillips. Okay. Love her to death. Um, I remember when she was either at the Washington Post, it was either Washington Post or New York Times, and she would just check in. She was just a, a contributor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and now she's sitting in a space with Don Lemon, but she recently had um, Cameron. And it's like, who booked Cameron? Everybody oh, see, like, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, everybody's like blaming Cameron and. He shouldn't get on TV like that. And, you know, for me, I was like, who didn't have Abby's back? Who booked Cameron? Mm-hmm. Thinking that one Negro, two Negro, still Negro. You yep. know what I'm saying? Also, why didn't Abby know, like, you want Cameron? But, 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 but she might not have known. Like, everybody's no. not a hip-hop head like that. True, you true. know what I'm saying? A lot of people just like Jay-Z and Kanye, and that's yeah. fine. But to your point, as much as hip-hop is, like, the number one music in the world right now, they should have a hip-hop contributor at CNN that is to, that specifically to do but this interviews. had nothing to do with being a contributor. It had to do with who booked Cameron. Mm. Just because Cameron is on the show with Mace doesn't mean that he could speak on Diddy. Mace was on Bad Boy. Mm. It was him. That was who you should have booked. Yeah. But somebody felt as if Cameron, Mace, same thing. Mm. Let's book them. And that's what you get. And then you set up your anchor for, but to the point, it's like having people who know or mm. even how to navigate that conversation. Right. Because there was still a conversation to be had with Cameron, right? Yeah. There was still a conversation to be had about what he thought about the industry and this narrative is happening is that the black man is the boogeyman and they're mm. doing all these terrible things. That is a real conversation to have with him mm-hmm. that goes beyond um, Puff Daddy. Mm-hmm. But they were so narrow-minded yeah, yeah, yeah. than wanting to talk about Diddy that Cameron checked them all. Mm. Do you think white people in those spaces even know how to have or present those conversations? No, they don't. They don't. They don't. Mm-hmm. And 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 it, and it sets Abby up because I don't. I, I mean, I don't see Abby in. Um, heavily enthroned and mm-hmm. engulfed in hip hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if she were to name five and, and I could be wrong. I can't speak for her. Mm. But I just feel like she wasn't like, okay, now at or who was in her ear to say, okay, this conversation is going this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let let let's ask him this instead. You right. know what I'm like, who was in her ear? But they were so fab- flabbergasted by his response, they were like, okay, Cameron, we're gonna go to break. Yeah. Because they didn't know how to have the conversation. And there is a bigger conversation that needs to be had because it's not just black men and hip hop. It's white rock and roll singers. Yep. This is The music Hollywood. industry in general is like, yeah. 
yeah. the behind the scenes stuff. Like I haven't been too, cause I, I put out songs, something got popular. I never really fully took off. Cause I was kind of like, I saw what this could be like. I went to a party one time and I literally, they were, they were walking around. Somebody's like, Hey, you want some orange juice? You want an apple? You want some cocaine? You want, some? I was like, just, just like, just a yeah, regular, just I mean, that's the, that's all the, the time. It, it's not, it's not Hollywood is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's not, that's just not a cliche. It's, yeah. it's a real thing. Like and it ain't just happening at Puffy's party. Nope. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, okay, Diddy, and, 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 and speaking of Diddy, they said that um, they've convened a grand jury. To, Have they? Yeah. Oh, so, they're taking on. Oh, wow. Okay. That's an update. And, and so <laughs> he might get, he might, you know, very well be indicted. I mean, he already um, said he did it, so I mean, you know, but it, it, but it's also like, you know, he, he, he. I'm not saying he, I believe that he has done some vile and evil things, but there is also a responsibility of consenting people who put themselves in spaces to get where they want to be, mm. and to be able to then cry Virginia Wolf or cry Wolf. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole nother conversation that has to be had too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and, and as a woman, I feel like um like we have been so or felt like we've been so victimized by men that this is our time to go after them. This is our time to be heard. Mm. This is our time to the slightest thing, you know, I want him to pay. Uh, but I think there has to be some type of conversations that we have about accountability, yeah. not just on Diddy's part, but on our part. Yeah, true. Because it's just there's so many things that are allowed to be gotten away with just because somebody has money or position. And that's, right. and to be fair, that that's been throughout history. Like kings have been able to get away with stuff and whatever. Like so, we could consider celebrities like modern day royalty in terms of like the amount of influence they have over things. Right. Because you think about. I was thinking like they like you know we cancel Diddy we cancel whoever and it's like but th- that that then sets up how much stuff are we going to cancel that they had their hands in and like right. you know we have I was looking at something the other day where it's like oh executive produced by name is one of some name is some artist and that artist gets canceled are we going to like take down that movie that they produced right. that well, they- well it, it, I mean too it's like okay well have we have we stopped watching like half of like some of the women who who accused Terry Weinstein of being this person yeah. I bet you they wouldn't want the movie that they played in to be pulled down. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if we're going to have a moral morality, you know, like we canceled R. Kelly, let's cancel all of Harry Weinstein's movies. Yeah. Just cancel them all. Woody Harold, Woody Allen. Let's just Allen, cancel yeah, yeah. all. No, but these, the um, Harry Weinstein's movies, they're still out there. His yeah. victims are in it. I don't see his victims saying, take that movie down. <laughs> There's no like old school, get the DVDs and then crush them with a steamroller. You know, Woody Harrelson, um, Woody Allen, yeah, not yeah. Woody, um, Woody Allen. Yeah. Take his movies down. We they're still, which goes back to they're like still able to work. I mean, not Weinstein, but like Woody Allen's still able to work. But it still goes, and it still goes back to the conversation we were having about Trump and Biden and white men and systemic mm. racism and all of these things. The system is designed, no matter how foul a white man is, that he'll get the grace that a black man will never get for like half half the crime. You like, know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, or like Je- uh, Jeffrey Epstein, that whole list of all those rich, yep. powerful white men who went to that island that did that shit. Some former presidents are in it, but for whatever reason, they're covered. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they're covered. They're, nothing's going to happen to them. You know what I'm saying? And they were doing some real, they were doing the same shit Diddy was doing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If yeah. not worse. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so, yeah, it's, it'll come hard on Diddy, though, because... Oh. And so it's like, it goes back to the systemics of this country and how minorities are more subject to pain, to struggle, to oppression, no matter how much money you have, yeah. versus a white man will get the grace and the favor because they're well, white. Well, so, cause it feels like, it, taking literal law, it feels like the laws are set up and say, okay, people are going to get punished for doing these things. But it's really like the subtext is like, but only really if you're black. So if you're right. a white guy that happens to get caught like this, we got to like figure out some ways for you to not get punished because really or not to bring people. everybody else into it yeah you know what i'm saying like you know and so i think those are the bigger conversations that need to be had 
instead of surface conversations because yeah. everything is diddy, 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 diddy. But what if we had a media to where we could say Diddy did this, but how about that Jerry Epstein list in that mm. book with all those other names in it? Can we talk about that too? Can we can we be can we be fair and right. balanced? But that is the power of mainstream media. It's controlled by white people and they let us know and they control the narrative that they want us to have because there's a way to hold Diddy accountable, mm. but also to have larger conversations about the culture and about how yeah. men and women play a role in all this shit. Yep, because I, I I definitely notice, especially like a YouTube angle, like the things that are going after men in general, like totally fine, this is that. If we were to say, hey, but what part did Cassie, oh, we're canceled. Like, can oh, have yeah, the, yeah. the conversation of like, what did the woman play a role in the situation that she ended up in? That can't be a conversation because YouTube will heavily demonetize you for yeah, even bringing that right. up. And is, it's not even uh, that you're saying that. It's a question to ask. Yeah. You know, there's a question. There's a question to ask. Why didn't you take criminal charges versus a civil case? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're questions to ask without, you know, judging her, yeah. you know, and still holding Diddy accountable. Like, that shit was foul what he did. Watching that video is like, I can't believe that that nigga did that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. and not to mention that he ran out in a towel. Like, that's <laughs> wrong. Like, of all the things, what's yes, wrong the with you, dude? But at the same time, we don't know the workings of that entire relationship. There are people that said that Cassie used to make fun of Kim mm. when he did it to her. And it was okay for her for him to be like that with Kim. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, it's so many nuances that you could have in that conversation. But I don't think that um well I know for a fact we're not having them. It's just not. this is this, this is this. A lot of it has to do with mainstream media. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with um um journalism. And the way that social media has made a play yeah, into really all is. of this to where anybody can have a certified opinion. Whether it actually makes sense or they whether right. they have all the facts or something right. also. Right, like right, the, right. Number of I've seen like uh, someone come out and say like, oh, this guy did this thing to me and blah, 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 blah. Gets arrested, goes to trial, maybe spends some jail time. Right. And, you come to, and, and it's all over the media. And then you find out later, oh, I just made it up. My bad. And then nothing. No, the media doesn't come back and say, oh, remember that story we told you guys? Well, actually the guy wasn't guilty. Sorry. It's just like, oh, well, we'll just well, right. on to the right. next thing. Next thing. This other evil guy did. Like, So if anything... Research dual citizenship. You know, I think that these are conversations that um, we should be having not because we're talking about all of this. But then think about the role that we haven't even um, understood how AI is about to play a huge oh, role yeah. in all of this. Yep, because there's going to be a lot more deep, fake, deep fakes happening. A lot of people saying, oh, this is proof this guy said his confession. But it's like, I mean, just the fact that during the, the Drake and Kendrick stuff, there were so many like different AI things being used. And then other people come out with other AI technologies. And then BBL Drizzy is the AI creation. It's like, it's starting to sound more and more realistic to where it's like, you could have an AI Joe Biden saying, you know, F all the J's. Right. Or you could have Trump come out saying, F all the Negroes. And it's like, you can see it sounds real. And there's going to be a group of people that believe that. Yeah, you, you, there's going to be a group of people who you cannot change their mind that that wasn't right. You know, because they feel like it should have been true, or that he could say or, something like yeah, that. Or yeah, or hey, they, they're not, they're not going to. And then another thing, um, it's so funny. I tried to watch Atlas at mm -hmm. least five times. Okay, never got through it. But one of the things that stuck out to me was how they had these AI bots that were driving the buses mm -hmm. that were you know at the at the restaurants. Which, in theory, it sounds like, okay, we're saving money. But then the bots turned on them and started. <laughs> and I'm like, that shit could really happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you just don't know. Or you get some sinister fool like Elon Musk that's controlling the bots. And then the nigga takes over. You know what I'm saying? Like, all. I mean, it's overwhelming. Oh. I mean, it's over. It's like. The Jetsons are really starting to. Oh yeah, they've, they've been. They've, this has come to fruition for a long time now. Yeah, just all those all those sci-fi movies. Almost everything that's been created in a sci-fi movie at some point 
has been created. Like I remember as a kid going to see Demolition Man, and it was like you know Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes get get frozen right. and they wake up in like 2012, and it's like oh my god, look at how the robotic the cars on this set. and like most of the stuff in that movie came like three three years earlier than the movie predicted. Right, like it's right. insane. Like right. even down to the cars, it's like wild, you know. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack. Dual citizenship. Especially if you feel exhausted like me and you're, and, and you're rethinking a lot of things. <laughs> My priorities is uh, dual citizenship okay. and, and wanting to see if I should expand out my black bubble. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I found post post uh, HBCU, like the majority of my friends are black. Most of the spaces I go to are black. And I just feel comfortable there. And it's not that I can't go back into spaces where there are other minorities. I mean, or, or other right. majorities. Because, I mean, I go home. My, my brother is around most white people. I get along with him great. Right. It's totally fine. But, like, I just, I'm not in that point yet in my life where I'm like, I need to force to try to go back there. Try to work I'm not, And I'm not saying forcibly. I'm just saying exploring. Like, yeah. not, I, I mean... Just exploring the options out there, and 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 a lot of times you could be so committed to something mm-hmm. that is only halfway committed to you, and that could be black or white. That is very true. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I've heard a lot of people say that that even like are unapologetically black in black spaces, and mm-hmm. they talk about how you know it was another ethnicity or race that you know helped them expand you know, where they're trying to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that, and then like, if you're a child of God, you know, we should all, humanity has no color. Mm. It has no color. And so like for Black Lives Matter, they got white people for Black Lives. You see what I'm saying? So it's just, you know, it's just being able to, um, to see the bullshit, to to be able to and then just to be able to make sense of it and mm-hmm. and, and it, it's 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 a lot. It is a lot indeed. It's a yes. lot. Uh, well, yeah, I think that's all we got for today, guys. So we'd love to hear what you'd like for us to talk about on this random conversation that we're having. Maybe and we uh, should call this random conversation. I was thinking we should call like, I was thinking we should call it random ass conversations, but I don't know if, if ass will play in the media. But I, I thought about that. It's just like random conversations because that's, that's what we seem to be talking that's about. That's what we seem yeah, to yeah, talk yeah. about. But we'd love to hear what you want us to talk about on the show. So write down in the comments stuff you want us to talk about or cover. And uh, we're always trying to find like news worthy stuff to talk about. We're heavy into entertainment stuff. So leave us some stuff and we'll talk about it if it interests us. Right. All right. right. And we're on a countdown. Right. Trump verdict on the way. Awesome. We'll talk to you guys later. We're out. Peace. Bye.